So the next set of deductions we're going to do is on implication elimination. Now these are some of the most useful ones that you'll find throughout the course, both in the propositional but also in the predicate logic sections. And so it's, it's important to be able to get a good sense of how to do these inside of JAPE. So I'm going to go through two different proofs, and these are the two, again, that correspond to what Professor Ellis did uh, in the lightboard session that you saw. So we'll fire up JAPE. What I'm going to do is uh, first load the theory, of course, for the course. Uh, but I'm going to add both of the sequence that we want to prove before I start with the first one. So the first sequence here is that we want from the premises P, and then P implies Q conjunction with double negation R. We want to be able to deduce R from that. Right? And we're going to be using a few different elements in order to prove this. Um, the next one that we'll do after that is that from premises Q and not P implies not Q, you're going to want to deduce P. All right. So let's look at the first one here. We have our individual premises, two of them uh, to start off with. And um, what we're going to do is uh, straight away use uh, an implication elimination. Right? So here's the implication that we want to eliminate, and it's a forward step that we're doing here. And the implication elimination requires us to have both the implication and the, uh, the part of the formula that's on the left side of the implication must already hold, either as a premise or a previous step in the proof. So we select these two, forward, implication elimination, and we're now left with uh, the right side, the consequent here, Q and not not R. And now from this, we're able to do uh, steps that we've already seen before, conjunction elimination, let's preserve the right, and then use a double negation uh, to eliminate this. And we now have the complete proof. So this is a very simple example of implication elimination. You have to have the antecedents already proved, either a premise or somewhere in the proof, and then you can apply this elimination step. So I'm going to close this out, record it, and we'll take a look at uh, the second one here. Let's uh, just a slight twist on what we've seen already. Um, so now what we have here is an implication that's not P implies not Q. And there's a different way to do an implication elimination. This is uh, modus tollens, right? So essentially you're saying you want the negation of the consequent to give you the negation of the antecedent, right? So that's a, it's a complicated way to go about this, but we want the negation of the right side here in order to give us the negation of the left side. Now, if you look, the negation of the left side is actually what we're headed for here, right? So that lets us know that we're on the right track. And so what we're going to do is to say uh, this uh, negation of the consequence, uh, technically not not Q is the same as Q, but we need to be able to deduce that first. And so we start off by introducing a double negation here, right? So in a forward step, we're going to introduce a double negation on side of Q. And now this is in the correct form for us to use modus tollens. Right? I believe if we were to select these two things and say that we would try to apply modus tollens, it's going to create an error and say, look, you can't do that. You need to have um, the real syntactic negation of what's going on. So what we've done instead is we've derived not not Q, and then we apply the modus tollens for this, which gives us the not not P. And now we're kind of home free, right? From this, we can apply the forward step, double negation elimination, and we get uh, finally P. That's what it is that we want to deduce. Uh, so these are two different ways, your standard implication elimination and the modus tollens ways of removing implications from the formula that you have. And both of them are forward types of reasoning.